This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. So what I'd like to do now is diagram for you the site hierarchy or architecture in System Center Configuration Manager 2012. So what we're looking at here is how sites can interrelate with each other and replicate data with each other. If you remember or if you have the background with System Center 2007, we had the concept of primary sites and secondary sites. And actually, primary sites could be children to other primary sites. You create a, a hierarchical structure by just linking together these multiple different primary sites, and you can go to uh, multiple levels of depth. Well, that's changed now. We can't do that anymore. It's a whole new structure. We still have the terminology primary and secondary sites, but we're also now introducing the concept of this central administration site. So let's start there. At the very top of our hierarchy is going to be this central administration site. Now, what this is and what this represents is a top-level placeholder, in essence, like an umbrella to the rest of the child sites that we might have. Um, and those are going to be primary. So we'll get to that in a moment. Now, the central administration site has a site server with its own database. However, no clients are assigned to this site, and that's a big change from Config Manager 2007. Clients do not directly report into this. As the name implies, its purpose is for central or top-level administration of our entire site hierarchy, uh, no matter how much depth we might or might not have in that hierarchy. Now, before I go any further, I want to point out that many deployments, many organizations won't even bother with a central administration site. And that would be because all they're planning to deploy is a single primary. No uh, additional primary sites whatsoever. So it's a quite large or geographically dispersed organization that might consider using this central administration site. But a single primary, if that's all you had, that was a single primary, it can support up to 100,000 client machines. So that may very well be all you need. So let's add a primary into here. The central administration site comes first, and it must come first. And then below that, we can create primary sites, which also have site servers connected to their own database. And we can have, at this level, multiple primary sites, but they're all at the same level. There is no further depth when it comes to primary. So in other words, what I used to be able to do was create another primary here and indicate that it was going to be a child to this primary. Well, we don't do that anymore, so let's get that off of here. And instead, we can go another level deeper if we wanted to by implementing secondary sites. These would be some of the smaller branch office locations, perhaps. And they can hang off of a primary. So the most depth you can have in your hierarchy is three levels. The central administration site at the top, a layer of multiple primaries in the middle, and then a layer of secondaries below that. And that's it. Now, what's the point of this? Well, the primary sites are going to be representative of our major regions, most likely could also be representative of business units. It depends on how you want to break things up. But let's say that this one is representative of North America. So I have a site server in North America with its own site database. And then I have, let's say, a major site or primary site for Europe. And that'll have a server and a database. And then let's say I have one for Asia Pacific as well, again, with its own server and database. So clients in each of those major regions will connect into or be assigned to one of these primary sites, and that'll be their main point of contact. Now, in a moment, we will break out and dive deeper into what makes up a site, 
all the different site system roles. But in the meantime, there's a general uh, concept here that is we, we assign our clients to report into one of these sites and their primary data is managed and maintained in that corresponding database. Now a secondary site actually also has a database. In many cases, it might be a site server uh, and co-located database with SQL Express Edition maybe. It doesn't have to be, but it is going to be localized um, on the actual site system that we put in that location. Now the reason we might do that is because in certain branch office locations where WAN connectivity to the main office is, is somewhat unreliable or not particularly high bandwidth, we may want to allow clients to report directly into those site servers so they're not having to connect across the WAN to upload much of their site data. Now more on that later. In, in Config Manager 2012, that's not our only option for branches. We have other options now that might be preferable. So data. How does data flow through this hierarchy? Well, in our central administration side at the top, we have global data in the database. Now, we also will have global data that is maintained or configured or can be configured at each site server. Global data is configuration information, just what we refer to it as. So if I go in and I'm configuring my primary site or I'm configuring my um, application packages or software update definitions, there's just a lot of different configuration elements. I might configure boundaries, and we'll get into all of that, but these are configuration elements that should probably be uh, replicated throughout the environment. So global data replicates up, and some of it might also replicate down the hierarchy. Things that originate up in the central administration site, because I can go there to make changes to some of the configuration data for the entire hierarchy, will replicate down through the hierarchy to all sites, uh, primary and secondary alike. So global data is replicating using, micro, uh, using SQL Server uh, database replication. Now it's using its own sort of customized version of database replication, um, but it is nevertheless replicating data via the database. Now, there is also something known as site data site-specific data. Site data is also living in the database at every primary site and indeed is living in the database at a secondary site as well. Um, it only replicates up the chain. So something that originated at the secondary will replicate to its primary which will then replicate up to the central administration site. Site data is all the data that clients are gathering and uploading inventory data, desired configuration management reports, uh, alerts, and just general information that it's gathering about its status and operation. So the clients are gathering data, we call that site data, and it doesn't need to replicate down the chain, but it does replicate up. So I can go to any level of this hierarchy and run reports and view information for that area on downward. So if I go to this primary site in North America, and I view some of the status messages, I can see stuff all the way down that's also coming from the secondaries. But I'm not gonna see information that came from other primary sites. But if I go to the central administration site, this is a way that I can run reports and view information for the entire organization because it is all replicated up into this database. Now, not everything will need to replicate up, but the kind of things that we're gonna be reporting on and viewing messages about, I mean, a lot of the information will be in that central management database. Now I mentioned that there are alternatives to secondary sites now. And just very quickly, one of those alternatives might be to deploy, instead of a secondary site, I might simply put a distribution point at that office location. In this case, we're replicating data downward to the distribution point, which would be things like our application packages, operating system images, all the file system data that makes its way onto a distribution point. More on that later. But we're not replicating or capturing any site data at this location. It's simply the large heavyweight files that have to transfer on the network. We can control the transfer of that 
to a distribution point, and then from there distribute out to all the clients at that office location. So that could be a good alternative to deploying an entire um, secondary site, is to set up an actual uh, distribution point instead. So more detail on that as we go along, but this is the core architecture when it comes to the various different sites that we have and how we link them together and a little bit about how that differs from Config Manager 2007. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.